hi guys happy to see you all back through this video so in this video we just going to focus on uh, you know what a uh, aneka resource provisioning services okay we just going to see the overview of the aneka resource provisioning services and in the next video we just going to focus on the rest of the things and in the previous video we have discussed about the uh, tools and technologies and about the aneka cloud platform and if you wish you can uh, go through that and this video is going to focus on you know this aneka resource provisioning service okay so normally you know what uh, by the help of aneka what we can do in the sense uh, so why the aneka resource provisioning services is needed uh, in the sense you know uh, for you know uh, the, uh, the aneka uh, provides the, the aneka framework is uh, mainly meant for providing the platform as a service it not only going to uh, you know focus on you know the programming models multiple programming models in order to you know uh, enable the uh, cloud users to develop their own stuff develop their own application and they can deploy their own application in order to you know in order to provide such kind of environment we are in need of some underlying hardware we are in need of some underlying hardware and underlying operating system isn't it okay so such kind of things can be you know that also can be provided by the aneka through the resource provisioning model through the resource provisioning model okay in order to have a prop in order to have a proper platform in order to have a you know proper environment for creating our own application we need some sort of uh, underlying hardware we need some sort of underlying operating system it has to be managed by the vendor it has to be managed by the vendor only it has to be managed by the cloud service provider only okay so such kind of resources you know that can be managed properly that can be managed efficiently with the help of this aneka resource provisioning services okay so let us you know uh, deep dive into this particular topic yeah and you know uh, so normally the uh, the aneka container uh, is completely ma it completely mapped with heterogeneous resources as you all know what i mean by heterogeneous resources in a is consider this is a resource pool in the sense if you are having n number of resources and those n number of resources are not in a con that that could not be same in all times okay and say for example the ram capacity would be different you know the processor capacity would be different and that platform you know the operating operating system could be in a different setup you know there could be ubuntu operating system that could be fedora that could be cc and that could be you know uh, windows operating system windows uh, windows 8 windows 10 32 bit and 64 bit we will be having in uh, switch set of resources uh, that could not be same in all the cases okay so the particular resources will collide you know the particular resources will collide and those set of uh, different set of resources that that's why the aneka is completely you know uh, uh, mapped with the heterogeneous resources and you know uh, one of the important time in a cloud computing environment is elasticity you know so based on any based on a demand the particular resources can be scaled up particular resources can be you know uh, that could be scaled up or it could be scaled down okay and that could be scaled up or scaled down this elasticity also can be achieved in a very efficient manner with the help of this resource provisioning model the elasticity is can be achieved with the help of resource provisioning framework okay and you know this aneka resource provisioning that can be done and over private and public cloud environment say for an example initially we will be in a initially we will be in a private cloud environment if the resources are not sufficient if the resources are insufficient in order to you know deal with the uh, request incoming request in the sense and what the aneka will do in the sense what the aneka will do in the sense it you know it requests the public cloud environment it requests the public cloud environment you know like amazon like microsoft azure and uh, you know that it approaches the public cloud environment you know for uh, availing such kind of resources in order to deal in order to deal with the uh, you know in order to deal with the requests that are given by the particular cloud user okay we will see that we will see that with an example so normally uh, the resources that are present in the private cloud environment normally the resources that are present in the private cloud environment has been categorized into two one is static resources and another is the dynamic resources and what do you mean by static resources in the sense if it is if it is a physical server if it is a physical desktop that is resident in a private cloud environment in the sense then it is called as a static resources and uh, dynamic resources in the sense normally you know the virtual instances will be created the virtual instance will be created from the data center that is present in the particular private cloud environment okay hope you know the difference between the physical system and the virtual system right isn't it the physical in the sense the desktop and the server everything will be available physically okay and in an unused system surely that will be put it in an ideal position only but rather when you go for dynamic resources you know that particular instance the particular instance can be created virtually when when when, when it is being demand when, when when it is in need of okay and that could be created from the data center that could be created from the data 
sensor okay so the normally the resources that are reside in the private environment has been categorized into one is static resources and another one is dynamic resources okay coming to the public resources public cloud resources that has been categorized into two one is on demand resources and another one is reserved resources what do you mean by on demand resources in the sense you know uh, when we are requesting when we are requesting the public cloud environment when we are requesting the public cloud environment immediately the dynamically those things will be provided dynamically that will be provided and coming to the reserved resources you know uh, prior to the scheduled time prior to the scheduled time and those set of resources can be reserved those set of resources can be reserved by the particular environment okay so normally the public resources can be categorized into one is on demand resources and another one is reserved resources hope you know the clear idea about you know uh, the so resources that are present in the start, uh, private resource that is static resources and dynamic resources and obviously uh, public resources about uh, on demand and reserved resources hope i have given a uh, clear cut uh, definition for these things and uh, so this is the simple scenario uh, how the aneka resource provisioning service works okay so consider so this is the private cloud environment this is the private cloud environment this is the public cloud environment okay and in the uh, private cloud environment we are having two set of resources one is static resources and another one is dynamic resources okay and the static resources which means that the physical servers and dynamic resource which means that virtual machines that could be a virtual desktop or which could be a virtual server uh, that is based on the demand the particular virtual in virtual instance can be created okay and in this public cloud uh, the resources can be provided in two and in two ways one is on demand and what what is another one and another one is the, you know uh, reserved resources another one is the reserved resources okay and you know what uh, so initially uh, we will be in a private cloud environment if the resources that are present if the resources that are present in the particular cloud environment is insufficient in order to uh, in order to deal the incoming request in the sense and what the aneka will do in the sense it will approach the public cloud environment it will approach the public cloud environment for availing such kind of resources and that will be you know that will be added to this particular network and by which we can manage the uh, manage the incoming request so this is this is the main purpose of aneka resource provisioning services okay and uh, let me see let me give you an, a simple example how it could be done okay so normally uh, before that uh, you know the dynamic resources can be provided by any type of hypervisor that are reside in it either through the zen or ecolipitas or vm vm workstation and through which we can uh, you know create a virtual instance okay and uh, uh, let me let me give you a uh, simple example thereby you can get uh, you know much more understanding about this particular topic just look at this example you know uh, the client is requesting for 30 number of resources okay the client is requesting for 30 number of resources once the request is coming into the environment what the aneka will do in this is aneka will and aneka will identify who whatever the resources are free from the particular private cloud environment this is the private cloud environment okay and this is the public cloud environment this is the public cloud environment okay so on considering a scenario it you know it it, it identifies that fine number of physical uh, physical machines fine number of static services and total number of dynamic services are available at present okay so cumulatively uh, how many thing we are having how many resources we are having 70 number of resources okay but in order to satisfy the particular client request uh, you know uh, remaining 30 number of requests uh, uh, remaining 30 number of resources are needed okay but this 30 number of resources are not provided by the particular private cloud environment okay in order to satisfy the particular client request what the aneka will do in the sense it will forward the request to the public cloud environment it requests the public cloud environment to provide this 30 number of resources okay once it has been processed by the public cloud environment you know that 30 number of resources can be you know that can be uh, uh, hired from the public cloud environment and that will be added to this network that will be added to this network thereby you know this 30 number of resources can be you know that that, that can be given to the client in order to uh, manage their particular uh, manage their particular request okay so this is how normally you know uh, the aneka will handle aneka will do the resource provisioning service okay hope this example will give you a clear cut idea how the you know the static resources and dynamic resources and how the public cloud environment the resources from the public cloud environment can be available hope you have got a clear cut idea so this is about the aneka resource provisioning services 
and in the next video we are going to see about you know what uh, hybrid cloud in implementation with the help of anika framework and if you wish you can ping or follow me through any one of the social media platform and thank you guys we will see on the next video